Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. Today I'll be briefly talking about two important concepts, dominance and hegemony. And I'm listing them under postcolonial studies, but of course they are also general theory concepts that can be used anywhere else in literary studies. So dominance and hegemony as theorized are usually attributed to the Italian Marxist philosopher and theorist <clears throat> uh, Antonio Gramsci and famously discussed in his uh, collection of writings called the prison notebooks. And in that he uh, theorizes that most of the time a regime works either through dominance or hegemony. And he defines dominance as uh, the naked force of the state, which it implements through police, through the justice system, through the military, and as the word itself suggests, a system so created is maintained in force through brute force. But then he also contends that most of the times any political regime doesn't really necessarily rely on dominance, but uses hegemony as a system of control. Now, what is hegemony? According to Gramsci, a hegemonic system is established through the willing consent of the people. And that consent is obtained by the dominant regime through what he calls cultural hegemony. So think of it in this way, how in a given society could we use ideological means, education, or anything else, religion, to convince a people that it is in their best interest to follow the law and believe in the current regime. And that system then doesn't coerce people into following orders, but actually convinces them through ideological means, maybe through connecting the steps taken by the regime to their uh, self-interest. But overall, hegemony works through this willing consent. And the cultural hegemony comes into force when people actually um, accept the existing system of government or system of life as normal and natural. Now in post-colonial studies, these two terms of course really, really matter uh, because within the colonial regimes, we get to see that originally most colonial regimes were established through dominance, through military dominance most of the times. But eventually the colonizers do develop a sort of a hegemonic regime by providing westernized education, by creating an elite whose interests were connected to the colonizers, or if not connected to the colonizers who worked within the system to stabilize it. Now Ranajit Guha has a wonderful article which eventually became a book called Dominance Without Hegemony, where he argues that the British in India never really established a hegemony and ruled through dominance. I slightly disagree with that because my idea, and I it, it is in my first book too, in Constructing Pakistan, because my idea is that in order to establish their hegemony, the British didn't need to introduce their own so-called liberal systems in India. Actually, they established the hegemony by incorporating the local elite you know, urban and rural within their project. So their hegemony did not depend on uh, certain Western universals, but they rather played with the particularities of the class system and the social system within India to create that hegemonic project. Now, uh, the person who theorizes it further from Antonio Gramsci is, of course, Louis Althusser in his famous essay, uh, Ideological State Apprentices and Repressive State Apprentices, he actually gives a footnote that his idea of repressive state apprentices and ideological state apprentices comes from 
um, Antonio Gramsci, and then he theorizes that this in a similar vein that the state doesn't usually necessarily use brute force and dominance to sustain its system, but most of the times it works through ideological means. And in his example, it's the educational system that creates that kind of hegemonic project in which people are shaped into the subjects or objects of any regime. But the threat of violence is always there. So to conclude, dominance, as the world itself states, is any system in which a regime establishes itself and sustains itself through force, through the force of the law, the police, the military, and hegemony, on the other hand, is more subtle, it's more ideological, and it creates a system through education, through socialization, through contacts with the community, where people willingly give their consent to be governed, right? And it's that willing consent through hegemony that uh, becomes part of the hegemonic project. Now, there is a wonderful critique of the regime and how it regimes and how they function by John Rapley. I'll probably do a video on him too sometimes, where he tells us about how when a regime comes to crisis, the moment is when the people realize that the consent that they had given is either being misused or is not fulfilling the promises that was made to them. And that is when a regime renegotiates the consent of the people. And all of it depends on how they maintain hegemony. So overall, I think this was helpful. Um, I will continue producing these brief uh, lectures. And if you have any ideas, any suggestions, anything that you would like to record a lecture on, please feel free to comment below. And also, if you haven't already done that, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me and see you next time.